Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, aka Barnacles, and today we're gonna bust out the Ultimaker V2 3D printer, and we're gonna print a giant Lego-like Darth Vader for our buddy and friend Chris Perillo, who has a very unhealthy addiction with Darth Vader. I say we feed it and see what happens. And may the dark side be with you. <laughs> All right, guys, well, the first step is we need to download the model, which I already did, and I have it sitting in the folder. You can see that each one of the STL files is a separate part. The only things we didn't print was the lightsaber handle and the lightsaber. Um, I may eventually print that down the road, but for now, I just wanted to print out the, the main figure, and then you can put whatever you want in its hands. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a program here called NetFab, and you can see I already opened up uh, the Darth Vader head. And uh, this is a really cool program for 3D printers because it allows you to fix models. When people 3D model stuff, most of the time what happens is there's little defects and stuff in the print that make it so the slicer can't tear it apart and make it into thousands of layers that ultimately get printed to make your 3D item. So what you want to do is you want to come in here and make sure that the model's good. So what you do is come up here to, uh, let's see, part, sorry, extras, repair part. And then you can look at the part. I just go down to do automatic repair, say do the extended repair, and it'll go through and analyze the whole model and then make changes to it. And you can see it made a couple little changes in here and over here. And it basically just makes all these changes with the fact that you're gonna 3D print it in mind. And then when you're all done, you click apply repair, make sure you click apply repair. If you don't, it doesn't work. And then once you do that, here's the repaired model. And then you go up to project and say export as STL and that's it and you're done. Now, I went ahead and did that for each of the individual parts before I fed them to the printer, and I just do that as a course of habit now, because a lot of models that I download, uh, whether somebody creates them for me or whether I get them from like Thingiverse or Umagine, uh, they tend to have flaws in them, and those flaws show up in the 3D printing and in the slicing. So running them through NetFab, it gives you a huge advantage. So if you guys got a 3D printer and you're doing this, make sure you're running your models through NetFab. It takes just a minute, and it's totally worth it. All right, so now we're gonna switch over to Kura which we have right here. And you can see I have everything laid out on the build plate. You can print this entire thing on one build plate. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it up into two different parts um, so that I can do it in two prints because basically I wanna do what the first one is the test print so that I don't waste a ton of material. And then if everything looks good, I can print the rest of the parts. And plus it'll build a little bit faster because the print head won't have to move around over so much empty space to, to align with each one of the individual parts. It's just personal preference. If you wanna set it up and have it print overnight and you're confident everything's gonna work out, go for it. And I'll tell you right now, I didn't have any problems printing this thing. It came out beautiful. All right, well, let's get the printer fired up and feed this thing to it. All right, I've transferred the models to the SD card from Kura. Everything's sliced at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, and we're printing at 80 millimeters per second, which isn't the highest speed or the highest resolution this machine can do. But I was trying to push the model to get printed in under 10 hours. And right now it's...
Just finishing up with the legs a little bit. The music that you just heard was Crashed by Stereo Float, an amazing song. I love to use it in almost all of my time-lapse 3D printing videos. Hope you guys enjoy it. All right, guys, so here we have the completed pieces here. You can see we've got the legs. We've got, the, I guess this is the pelvis. You've got the head. That's important. Two hands, two arms, a belt. Well, I guess it's a belt, sort of. And then you got the main torso. And the pins that I printed, if you look, they're actually pushed up inside and through, through here to hold the arms on. I'm not quite sure why they decided to do it this way in the print, but I'm sure it had something to do with fitment. Now, all I had to do to get this thing to work is, you can see I did some light sanding around the areas on some of the hands and on the pegs that came out of the arm and where the head attaches. And that was just to smooth it up because the I printed it at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, which actually isn't that super high of a resolution because I wanted to print it out faster. And uh, so it's always trade off for speed. And so I had to smooth it out because it was too gritty and the pieces didn't want to fit together really well. But just a little bit of high grit sandpaper and boom, you're done. PLA actually sands really nicely. As long as you don't apply a lot of force, otherwise it'll start heating up and it'll actually melt together. You can actually weld stuff together doing that. So let's go ahead and start with the torso piece that we have right here. You see, I already just did a little sanding up here. Otherwise, it's straight off the printer. I didn't do any finishing other than that on the part. So let's go ahead and attach the head. So you can see the head printed with a hole in it that fits right on there. You just twist that right on. It's like, what's going on when I got the dark side? Okay, so anyways, we've got the pelvis here. And the pelvis, to hold the legs on, you just feed him up like that. But you can see it doesn't look very good in there. So let's go ahead and pull that off. That's because we have to put his belt thing on first. Uh, I'm not quite sure which way it goes. If it goes this way or this way. I think it goes this way. All right. So now he's got his little belt thing on. So we're going to go ahead and push this up in there like this that that looks that looks correct so now you can see from the side it all just and this whole thing just snaps together so now the legs you can see i did a little bit of sanding around there just to smooth it out so the legs just pop right on like that starting to look like a little little armless darth vader i mean he actually doesn't even need arms to be honest i'm surprised they even bothered uh putting his arms back on at all uh because he's got the he's got the dark side force right what the hell is that called I, I don't even remember i need to watch some star i'm sure i'm gonna get chewed out now by crisp for not knowing that but anyways the hands they they just fit right into the little the little arms and you can position them however you want and there's also a lightsaber you can print i just didn't get around to it so and then the arm just goes on the side like that and the arms move now i sanded off a little bit too much material i can tell that now so i'd have to put something in there uh, maybe just a little dab of glue or something like that to hold it on because right now you can see it just comes off but it'll stay there if we just put it on so now let's grab the other hand here uh, screw that into place get it the direction that we want it here we want to probably point up a little bit put that arm like that and now you have a lego sith lord now to give you a little idea on scale here i placed an xbox controller next to him and uh so he's he's actually fairly large here let me grab one of my pop cap figures too we'll stick a donatello there you can see he's actually a pretty big figure and the other thing that's cool is you can position his arms and hands in any position you can turn his head now the thing that makes it resemble lego of course is you got the signature holes in the back of the legs like it would fit on a lego board and also just the general shape of the hands and the torso and everything. The head itself was a model that was already available and created separately that you could print out. But the body, somebody else picked up that project and continued it. And I'll put a link to the project in the description. So if you'd like to go print your own, you can. Um, and I highly recommend using an Ultimaker. They're fantastic printers. The Ultimaker V2, I've been using it um, for this new Halo helmet. I'm, print I'm printing a full-size Halo helmet. And uh, it's, it's actually turning out beautifully. And I've been doing print after print after print. And I've hit a couple of snags, but you know what? They were all my fault. Well, there you guys have it. You have one Lego-like giant Darth Vader, Sith Lord. And I will tell you what, he turned out phenomenal. And I hope Chris Perillo really enjoys it. I don't see how he possibly couldn't enjoy it. He has an unhealthy obsession with uh, Darth Vader. Um, so I'm pretty sure I could have taken, like, a cardboard box and drew Darth Vader on the side of it with a Sharpie. And it somehow would have made it into his collection. But I figured it'd be nice and at least put some effort into it. So Chris, I hope you enjoy your little Sith Lord right here. I hope to see it in the background of a video someday. And for the rest of you guys, I hope you enjoyed my latest 3D printing video. These things are starting to get a little crazy and out of control. My next video that I'm working on that's gonna happen in a couple of weeks, actually it's not the next video, but it's a, it's a 3D printing video I'm working on, is printing a full-scale wearable Master Chief helmet. It's gotta print out in 22 separate parts and be put together with pins and magnets. You guys will probably get a kick out of that. 
Um, so in the meantime, go check out my other videos. If you're new to my channel, click that subscribe button if you enjoyed what you saw, because uh, Darth Vader says so. <sighs> Oh, God, what a dick. Anyways, Chris, I hope you enjoy this thing. I want to see it in your collection. So anyways, guys, check out my other videos. Come talk to me on Facebook and Twitter. I'm on there all the time. I try to respond to comments on the videos, but honestly, this Google Plus comment shit sucks. Uh, so I'm a lot more responsive on the social networks. And guys, you're probably going to hear all this stuff again in the outro. So anyways, until next time. Oh, my God, Barnacles, please, for the love of God, do not give me to Chris Perillo. I've heard stories about what he does to Darth Vader figurines, and it scares me. Please, just melt me down, break me up, throw me in the garbage. Just, just tell him it didn't work. Tell, tell him the printer failed. Just tell him the printer failed. Just for the love of God, please do not give me to him. Please. And may the force be with you. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.